the terrifying story about Medusa no one was supposed to know. While Medusa and her snake-adorned crown are well known, less is known about how she came to be Medusa. Greek mythology has two origin tales for this character, both of which lead to her infamously gruesome demise. Before we go on, hit the subscribe button on your screen, and don't forget to turn on post notifications by hitting the tiny bell icon. All set, let's get this party on the road. But before we get right into these thrilling stories, let's first answer an often asked question. Who is Medusa? Medusa was an ancient Greek mythological character known for her terrifying ability to turn people to stone. She was one of the Gorgons, three sisters with human bodies, large wings, and snake hair. Steno and Uriel were the other two Gorgons, and their parents were the sea gods, Sito and Phorcys. Medusa, the Gorgon sister's youngest sister, was the only one who was not immortal, as well as the only one who began life as a great beauty. According to the earliest origin myth, Medusa was once a pretty young woman with lovely ringlets in her hair. Her beauty was so appealing that she attracted lots of suitors. She was worshipping in the temple of Athena when the sea god Poseidon noticed her and raped her. Because Athena is so furious that her temple has been desecrated, she decides to exact retribution on the unfortunate Medusa. It has been noted that Athena, the goddess of combat and goodness, rarely stands up for women. Perhaps she serves as a model for the envious elder woman who is so frequently depicted in later European fairy tales. In order to punish Medusa, Athena removes her favorite possession, her stunning hair. Once more, this is suggested of later fairy tales, particularly Rapunzel, who is punished by having her hair cut off for sleeping with the prince. By transforming Medusa's hair into writhing snakes, Athena renders her unattractive to males. This is a typical instance of victim blaming, and if that weren't enough, Athena gives Medusa a stare that instantly turns people to stone, ensuring that she will always be alone. Here we see the birth of the first Death Stare, a tool that has been used by women for countless years. The death look has been less lethal and potent over time, but it hasn't become less terrifying. Maybe your mother has one of those stares that both stops you in your tracks and makes you gasp for air. Yet Medusa refrained from using her powers on people and instead went into a pitch black cave. She had to live alone because she was unable to look at a friend or even an animal without killing them. This, however, was not going to last. Medusa never intended to hurt anyone, but the knowledge that she possessed the ability to do so prevented her from leading a calm existence. Men started looking for her soon after, and Perseus, the son of Zeus, eventually discovered her and killed her while she slept. According to the alternative origin myth, Medusa was once a Gorgon monster one of three daughters born to two sea monsters. As a Gorgon monster, Medusa is significantly less endearing than her alternate identity, the once human Medusa. But as Medusa in this version lives with her two sisters, what she loses in beauty, she makes up for with friendship. According to legend, these Gorgons have wings on their backs, snakes on their heads, and huge mouths with lolling tongues. We do not know if the sisters were guarded by the cave's darkness or if they were immune to Medusa's death look, perhaps because they themselves possess the same abilities. We do know that Stenho and Urale, her sisters, lamented her passing. They pursued Perseus after he killed Medusa and he was only able to escape their grasp with Athena's assistance. She definitely had a thing against Medusa. 
The sisters let out a resounding melancholy cry that is bone chilling upon Perseus's escape. As Medusa has the power to turn mortals and monsters into stone even after death, she is turned to an object after being severed from her head and used as a weapon. The lovely Princess Andromeda is bound to a rock and waits to be sacrificed to the sea monster that is terrorizing her father's lands after Perseus avoids the sisters of Medusa. Andromeda is about to meet her death when Perseus, who is still actually floating high on winged sandals, descends to save her. Perseus retrieves Medusa's head from a bag and turns the sea monster into stone after telling Andromeda to close her eyes, which is ironic because the creature is possibly a relative of Medusa's parents. People watching from the coast see the incident take place. Andromeda's father, the king, her fiancé, a loser by all accounts, and a few other inconsequential townspeople were present in the crowd. They can't hear Perseus's warning because they are too far away, and after looking into Medusa's eyes, they turn to stone. Given that Andromeda's father's passing has conveniently left the office of king open, this gives both Andromeda and Perseus the freedom to marry each other. Following this incident, Perseus uses the head of Medusa to turn numerous additional individuals to stone. We immediately realize that Perseus's post-mortem usage of Medusa's head results in more destruction than Medusa did while she was alive. It is Medusa that is regarded as a monster to be feared and reviled, whereas Perseus is celebrated as a hero. What were the powers of Medusa? After being cursed, Medusa is frequently depicted as having a horrific face, clawed hands, a tongue like a snake, enormous fanged teeth, and hair made of writhing snakes. In some tales, Medusa aroused Athena's wrath by boasting about her beauty, but whichever the case, Medusa had to pay a heavy price. Moreover, the curse gave Medusa new powers. Anybody who glanced at her face after that was transformed into stone. Most other tales claim that this was a power that both of Medusa's Gorgon sisters already possessed, making the three of them a frightening trio, although Medusa remained the only Gorgon who was mortal. Medusa's blood also has unique abilities. Drops of Medusa's blood that fell to the ground when her head was cut were changed into poisonous snakes. After killing Medusa, the hero, Perseus, carried her head through most of Libya. According to folklore, Libya has so many snakes because the blood from Medusa's head spilled through the sack he was carrying it in and scattered several drips of blood around the nation. Medusa in modern culture. Medusa, a legendary figure that combines beauty and danger, has come to represent the femme fatale in modern culture. She is a monster, but yet an incredibly alluring woman. Her head cutting has come to symbolize an erotic conquest, and she has evolved into a highly sexualized caricature. With little consideration given to who Medusa was prior to being discovered by Perseus, she has become weaponized and sexualized. Despite her immense power, Medusa did not take use of it for herself. She had no desire for power or retaliation, and merely desired privacy. Men kept looking for her, despite the fact that she didn't ask for fame or money so they might benefit themselves. She abstained from harming others and lived solely in the shadows for the benefit of others. Although having experienced brutality and injustice, she nevertheless demonstrates compassion for others. She is a lady who is trying her best to be a nice person, not a monster or a sexual object, in my opinion, albeit with very wiggly hair. Theogony, an epic poem written around 700 BC by the ancient Greek poet Hesiod, contains the earliest known mention of Medusa. 
Later, the ancient Roman poets Ovid and Virgil wrote about Medusa, expanding on her story and origins. Medusa's hair was particularly beautiful before she was cursed, according to Ovid, and she was very proud of it. Images of Medusa appeared often on warriors' shields and in works of art for decades in ancient Greece and Rome. Many thousands of years after the tale of Medusa was originally told, Gianni Versace, a fashion designer, adopted the ferocious, terrifying picture as a symbol of his brand. What stories and myths have you heard about Medusa? Drop yours in the comments below. And that brings us to the end of today's segment. Have you enjoyed the video? Give it a thumbs up and tell us just how much you enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, you can do it now for 10 years of good luck. Try it, it really works. Also, turn on the notifications for this channel so you don't miss out on premium content. See you next time.